What are the best food production building in settlement survival? First one is even higher, but early game that will be really best thing you can get. This area will yield you insane amount of food, guys. Sup, guys? It's Ten Kosh, and today we're doing settlement survival. Survival guide. Basically, how do you start the game properly so you won't die? Otherwise, you might end up with a problematic village that will starve, mostly starve, or die because of prison. So let's go. I will start with explaining the food mechanics because it's the core mechanics and the food will be your main issue throughout the game because as your population grows, you will need way more food and people without food will die faster than without, I don't know, coffee or something. So let's go into it. There are different sources how you can get food. You can see them all here in the agriculture menu and some of those in the uh, resource menu where you can get gatherers hut and hunters hut. So what's the best way to get food? Honestly, so far farms were the easiest and the best way to get food, but you shouldn't focus only on the farms. You should differentiate it between different buildings because you can get uh, some events in the game, some disasters that will not allow you to gather food from the farms and that might actually end you pretty fast. So you want to have reliable sources of food from other sources. <laughs> so how much food do you need? Uh, in On average, for each population, you need about 60 food. I figured out by calculating the amount of food my population produced per year. And you can check it in the town details production graph. Over here, you can see your food stockpiles and how much food is being used uh, last year and produced last year, basically. So you can see all the stats over here for other resources as well. So it's really convenient way to figure out how many annual resources income you need to keep up. So 15.5 thousand food was eaten last year and we have how much people 247 people so it equals 62.5 food per person but keep in mind that this is not the perfect uh, calculation this is not exact thing because uh, there are different types of food they have different values of uh, satisfaction of food so you can check each of those when you point over the food so uh, hunger eight for some of those but some give higher hunger restoration basically but on average it's 60 food per person you won't go wrong by calculating that so then you want to find out which food source will give you more food per day because your basic need isn't getting defensive food your basic need is getting enough food so your guys won't starve so yes let's start with farms if you are lucky enough and get the good uh seeds you can get something like peas that have the high yield there are uh, some seeds that have really high yield for the same amount of uh, same size of farm field basically so per farm I got the maximum size farm here peas give us uh, 3.9k while lettuce and tomatoes the normal things give 1.9k and we got oats here those are oats right yeah uh, that gives us 2.9k so as you can see different seeds produce different uh, amount of food and uh, the problem is that peas and oats are lower happiness food than cabbage and uh, tomatoes because those can be produced into the higher quality food over here and people will be happier when they eat them so yeah uh, it's better to go for the higher tier food later on when you can afford it but at early game if you are struggling it's better to plant several of those high yield crops to get the most resources now how the farming works basically in the early march oh it's march right now so i can show it to you how it works early in the year when you start planting the seeds i advise you guys to get the biggest farms and feed them with the most amount of farmers so it will be planted as soon as possible and in the autumn when the the ripeness will be ready to harvesting you will fill it with people again but during the summer when those are fully seeded like when those guys finish seeding them, you can see it yourself, no problem. You can send them away doing other stuff. So you will be able to reassign your workers um, and send them here on the field. And it will be the most efficient way of getting food. So, okay, guys, now when all the field is seeded, you can see that those guys are wandering around and applying fertilizer or I have no idea what they're doing, but I tested it like field without workers will give the same yield as the field with the workers. I, I got two, two exact fields over here and one was full of workers, one got none. And the difference was like none, non-existent. 
So you can send those guys away and assign them to other workplaces since April to probably uh september or maybe august depends so before you'll be able to get the food that way you can mix max your production and optimize your population so you can do it also through town overview over here by assigning farmers and uh, sending them to different workspaces and reassigning people from other works uh to the farming when needed so that's the core mechanics of getting the food so on average people on the farm are working for maybe I don't know, let's count four uh, months in a year, so that's like one third of the year, right? So we can divide the amount of workers we have here by three, that will be that will be four workers for the entire year. And if we divide 4,000, I mean, we don't need calculator for that, 4,000 peas by four people, each population produce 1,000 food per year. Can you imagine? That's like the best production you can get. Probably if you get better seeds, it can be even higher. If you get better farms, you will get even higher. But early game, that will be really best thing you can get. So that's the easiest way how to get food. Now, uh, you can check other buildings that you have for the same stuff. So those orchards, there is one person over here. And uh, that person produced 216 uh, food per year, which is not bad because those are higher hunger society and uh, happiness is higher. So the... Um, orchards are actually pretty good because they produce higher quality food basically then we got some fishers over here and i did a test here i placed two fish buildings next to each other not on the best point where they don't cover the most water but they have the fishing point and another one in the really high coverage i think it's 84 percent but without access to fishing points so they, they have four fishermen over there in each of those and the production is as follows the one that doesn't have access to fishing point produced 584 fish so this is really low production to be honest that's 146 food per person that's basically enough just for two people so that's really inefficient and you don't want to do anything like that uh my rule of thumb is getting 200 plus food per person like that's the best way that can be kept for the long term if you have lower income of food per person it's it's crap basically <laughs> So yeah, and uh, the one that have the highest coverage of water and closest to the fishing point got 1,000. So that's already something like uh, 225 or something. So those are actually pretty good and those can stay. And consider that uh, next to the food production buildings, you would like to place a storage yard or warehouse of sorts. So they won't have to walk around and carry that food so far away. And this fishing village is so far away from my main village here because uh, that was emergency when I, my fields were flooded and I had to get some food for my guys. So yeah, this small, small orchard over here is crappy. It's giving us 156 uh, food per year. So it's non-existent. I have to remove it actually. Now let's take a look at the hunters. Hunter's hut. There are two hunters over here. I'm not sure how many there were last time, but let's calculate how much food it's producing right now. So it's 376 per two people, which is actually pretty low as well. Uh, even lower than the fishermen. But the good thing about the hunters that they can get you cubs that you can place in the pastures. They also give you leather. They also give you fat, feathers and additional goods. So it's better to have them than not to have them. You can also upgrade them with some stuff. So they will have higher chance of paying cups. But this is expensive. I don't think that you need it. At least early game for sure. So yeah, hunters might be not the most efficient way of getting food for sure. But they are necessary to get your pastures up. We'll talk about pastures in a second after the gatherers. So the gatherers hut. Uh, this one is interesting. They can get you seeds for your farms. So... Yeah, it's important, but uh, I haven't actually got any seeds after the basic seed area got exhausted. Although for this gatherer's hut that I'm looking at right now, we got uh, 296 uh, food per person, which is actually pretty good. Moreover, they give you herbs that you can use for medicine later on. So those are essential as well, and you need them. So they should stay. Although uh, they are most efficient in the areas where they have a lot of trees around them. So it's best to couple them with the forester's hut, in my opinion. Now let's move on to the pastures. Now, pastures are extremely good because they work all year round. There is nothing like the farm issue where you have the seasons and you gotta take care of that and you don't need that many workers over there so i have three pastures here uh two of those with alpacas and one with goose and the thing is like 
Alpacas farm, they produce one, there is one person, and they produce uh, 192 meat. So that's like exactly at the minimum point for me. So this one produced 344. Why? I have no idea. So that's kind of varied by, by day. So sometimes they produce more, sometimes less. And take a look at this one. We got two workers in this pasture with the G's. It's huge. Uh, I think it's maximum size. I'm not entirely sure. And you produce uh, 650 food here for two people so it's like 325 each which is really good income as well it doesn't beat the farms yes but it's still really good it also produces you feathers uh, and, and other resources that might be useful so for from alpacas you get the wool that you can get clothes from and that kind of stuff so depending on what creatures what animals do you have you will have different results here and my advice is to build the biggest of those pasture sizes i think it's 15 by 15 as well Oh no, it's like 20 by 20, I think. Yep. The biggest one is 20 by 20. And as you can see here, this one is feeling okay. You don't really need to fill them up with people. Probably even one person will be enough. You can test it out. I haven't tested it out myself yet. In this game, I tried it in Banished. I got one person per huge pasture and it was going really well. So no need to do something like that. So that's for the buildings for the food. Now, interesting thing is there are special buildings like fodder factory over here and uh, uh, compost plant. After some time, when you start the game, that initial area where you will place your farms, it will exhaust itself and it won't give you those fantastic fertile soil bonuses. After that, you would like to build the compost plant because this is really easy to create, like that's the good start and uh, it, it consumes animal dung and water and produce compost. Meanwhile, it creates the fertile soil area around it where you can build a farm. Now, the best uh, placement of things here will be something like this, in my opinion. Uh, the idea is your fields or farms, they don't need to be fully in the bonus area. You just need to touch it by one pixel and you give, get in the full bonus so uh, you can create six fields of maximum size 15 by 15 just like that uh, on the sides of it moreover like my advice would be not making it as I did over here but putting it somewhere at the edge like starting them over here and make a bigger uh, orchards in the middle because those will give you like additional food income and that agriculture area will yield you insane amount of food guys so yeah uh as for fertilizer use so far i tried it and it doesn't give me a really good income like i had maximum workers over here fertilizer was used right like crazy and i got no results from I, I have no idea probably you need more fertilizer to make it useful but it's okay even without it so yeah you can get six fields and two orchards like that i advise you guys to build warehouses right next to it because you will need to store the food nearby so something like this will do you can also build warehouses on the outside up to you but yeah make sure that in the warehouse you get storable items set only to your food types so basically that will be all types of seeds and if you're producing something like uh flex over here cotton or something like that accept that as well so they won't have to go all the way to your main storage somewhere in the city they can drop it right next to their field that will be really useful Early on, it's the storage ground, just like we used here next to our fishing spot. So those storage yards will do as well. And yes, the main issue with this, that it will be pretty far away from the city. So um, your guys will have to go here to work and it takes some time. So making the paved roads next to it will be a really good idea because it will speed up the... Uh, worker deliver over here i was debating of building like small buildings next to it so it will be faster but i think it's not necessary because i still uh use farms as a seasonal things like two times per year as i told you i get the people in there to work and it's not giving me any, any trouble so i'm okay with that right now and you can even see that this far away fishing dock is producing sufficient amount of food even so far away so you don't really need to uh, that building to be next to your village how far do they have to go? Yeah, look at that. The villagers are getting here all the way from those buildings. Can you imagine that trip? Like your dad was going to the school. <laughs> of course, there are other buildings that produce food for you, like uh, beehives, honey stuff, and other things like that, but they are not 
core mechanics here and you don't really need them early on anyway so that's totally okay so yeah let's sum it up what are the best food production building and settlement survival first ones are farms farms are great then you got the pastures they are great as well uh they don't need a lot of workers and they get food by default over time then probably it will be orchards because those produce quite a lot of amount of food they should be bigger than i have over here uh and they produce it over time and you don't need to take care of that that much as uh for the fields so that's easier to control then you got the fishermen and then you got the gatherers and then you got the hunters i think it's going like that maybe maybe gatherers will be before fishermen i'm not sure depends on your situation on your layout basically okay so that's the core food guide for you guys that will be the food that you will be earning early into the game later into the game when you will get the proper research uh, you can get a lot of good things like for example farming efficiency over here is really really good because it allows you to uh improve the speed of sowing and harvest so you, your workers won't be as busy at those farms if you cycle them through you will definitely need compost over here fodder is harder to get because for the fodder house you need uh several types of food so in order to create the fodder you will need corn and uh, either peas soybeans or chickpeas so that's pretty expensive stuff it will it's more for the late game when you got farming going already so for example i don't have the corn seeds and i can't do this so it can't buff my pastures sadly so yeah basically that's all you need to start your food production you don't need plantation because it requires bricks and glass that's expensive and late game although the 40 percent extra yield would be really useful but i mean it's for the late game so for early game you can make so several of those like two or three and that will be enough to supply most of your needs and back it up with other production buildings so in case of something will go wrong here you might forget about cycling the population here and yeah you don't want to be starving after that so you can reassign workers to other buildings and uh tip for you guys it's a good idea to have several of those ready without workers just stay in there because you can if you are in the hunger times you can reassign workers to go to those docks and uh, gather huts and all that stuff so everyone will work there and produce food to supply your needs if something is wrong with your current food income so yeah guys that's about it for the food guide for settlement survival let me know if we have extra tips for the food production down below in the comments i'm really curious about that and subscribe to this channel because this channel is mostly about city builders colony simulations and that kind of games so this is like the main focus of the channel right <laughs> other games as well but this one is the, the main stuff and check out the video description for the playlist of settlement survival playthrough my other youtube channels social media discord and that kind of stuff and yeah thank you very much for watching that's about it for now stay and coach out have a good one bye